3D Holographic Dragon Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be doing a review from Warm Pretty Store and I'll be reviewing some chameleon powders and I've got five different colors and I'll also be reviewing their holographic silver chrome powder. And so you'll see my thoughts and opinions on those as well as some swatches. The other thing I'm going to be doing is this adorable little dragon nail that is really cute and he's covered in all those wonderful different mirror powders and he's really shiny and just kind of... I don't know. I think he's pretty cool looking, so I hope you like him, and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. So here are the different powders, and they all came in a little pouch like this one, so the, the little baggie itself is about the nicest packaging I've ever gotten from Born Pretty Store, so I was really surprised, actually. And then this is the hollow one, so it comes in just a little container. And to swatch them, I'm going to be applying a layer of black gel paint just on a little section of a nail tip. And then I'm going to be curing that for 60 seconds in my UV light. When you do this, you just have to test to see how long you have to do these to get the right amount of tacky layer um, after that has been in there for the 60 seconds i'm going to take the little applicator and then just sort of buff in the silver and then apply layer gel sealer and cure it again but the thing i want to say about the silver one specifically the silver chrome or silver hollow is that the glitter itself seems like it's a lot bigger than normal so it doesn't have a very smooth it it feels like you're applying glitter when you're putting it on it doesn't quite feel the same which is just a little it doesn't have quite a smooth appearance as some of them do at the end. So that's really the only thing. Otherwise, it is stunning and it is definitely holographic. For the other colors, you can see the numbers that are up on the screen, but they are... One of them is kind of like a green-teal combo. One of them is a blue and purple, teal and pink, green and yellow. Um, so this one is going to be the one that I said was teal and pink. And the video and my camera really do not do these justice. They are so much prettier in actual life. Than they are on the video screen which i am really disappointed in that they don't show up as well as i wish they would they once again they don't seem to be as refined as some other mirror powders that i've seen online like these these aren't going to be the like the silver the gold ones that are actually like a mirror but the the chameleon powders they do have more of a i don't know glittery appearance like the other stuff like the hollow like I mentioned so that doesn't have that smooth appearance which I think is why my camera didn't see how color changing and pretty they are so if you are looking for something that does have an iridescent appearance this is really nice they're relatively inexpensive and I would definitely check them out however if you're looking for a very true mirror or chameleon appearance this is not exactly what it is and some of the pictures are a little deceiving on Born Pretty Store's website because they do have a more of a glitter appearance than I was maybe expecting. So now I'm going to be dipping a bead of clear acrylic into some Mylar flakes and I'm just going to be using that as the background for my dragon. So it's pretty much clear except for those little sections that have the opalescent Mylar flakes. After those are on there, I'm going to take a layer of clear acrylic and encase that just to smooth it out. You really want to make sure that you encase those Mylar flakes and use the belly of your brush quite a bit to pat them down and pat them in. If you've ever used Mylar Flakes, you know that they're kind of a, a pain in the butt because they like to stick up and they like to stick up through acrylic really bad. And so, so then you end up losing quite a bit once you file them. Um, but if you can get them in there and if they do look right, they look absolutely amazing and they're so iridescent and pretty and opaly looking. So if you want to deal with them, I would recommend it. If you think it's they're too much of a hassle, you can just ignore them um, but then file it with a 180 grit file to remove the bulk and smooth it out and shape it and get it all nice and party and then buff it with a 240 grit padded buffer to remove any scratches and apply a layer of gel sealer and throw that into your lamp and cure it so now i'm going to be drawing out the shape of my dragon's wings so it's just a triangle or a v at the top and then a w like around a w at the bottom and then i'm going to be adding my black acrylic so i put down a nail form backing on top of it and you can see through the nail form backing onto the paper, which lets you sculpt out the shape that you drew on the paper relatively easy, just like you're doing a coloring book. Just stay within the lines. And so I'm going to sculpt out one wing, and then I can just slide over the nail form backing, and I can sculpt out the next one. And as I'm doing with this black acrylic, I am really trying to stay within the lines, just because I want... Sometimes it doesn't matter so much, but I want my two wings to be relatively symmetrical, and so I'm going to try to keep them as close to the shape I drew as possible. So now I'm going to be sculpting out the second one. And don't 
try to get your acrylic too thin here. Try to um, have it have some of its thickness there. So don't pat it out too much just because if it's too thin, it's going to be extremely delicate and breakable once you add it to the nail. But, you know, if you're putting it in a display case, that might not matter. So now I'm going to begin and sculpt my dragon himself. And I'm going to begin with his head. So I just placed a bead down that was actually a little too small. I don't sometimes you just don't get exactly what you were hoping for so i'm going to add um, his upper jaw and have it come down to a nice like pointed beak appearance and then add his lower jaw in there and because we applied that gel sealer down beforehand the black acrylic is sliding really nice and it's not leaving any dark black residue on the nail which is really important especially when you have a nice clear dainty looking nail as the background and you're doing all kinds of black art you really want to put something down to pretty much protect your background from getting dingy looking and then i'm going to curve his neck up and around once that has set i pretty much know where his wings need to be so i'm going to grab a wing and place down a bead of black acrylic and hold it in place until it's set or at least mostly set and i'm going to do it and i made the shiny side up so after you pop them off the nail form backing you're going to notice that one side is shiny and really smooth and one side has a little bit of a rough texture so i'd like to put the shiny side up for his wings and then i'm going to take and i'm going to be adding the rest of his body and his tail and i gave him almost a um a sea dragon sea dragon that's seahorse oh dear my brain anyways a seahorse type of body so have that nice arched back appearance and then have his tail just sort of extend right from his body and curve into a little curly cue which is the way I decide to go with it. Dragons, since they are a mystical creature, you have a lot of creative license to do exactly what you want. There are some that have a specific style that you could go with, but I pretty much decided to freestyle my dragon and do exactly what I wanted, which is pretty much the way I do everything. So yeah, but now that I have his body shape exactly how I want it, and as far as the outside perimeter of his body, I'm going to go through with my larger brush and some more of that black acrylic and just smooth it out because the texture of his body is not exactly perfect. You can tell where I stopped and started with each of those different beads. So I just add a little bit more to really give it a more, I don't know, rounded appearance. I'm going to add a little bit more acrylic so that his head comes out a little bit farther out from his neck. Just to make that look a little bit more 3D. If you're doing something three-dimensional, you don't want it to just be a flat shape. You want it to actually have dimension. And now I'm going to be adding this panel of the scales that's on his tummy. And so I'm going to add an oval bead that just kind of goes around his tummy right in that area. And I'm going to set that down and let that set. And then I noticed another little area that needs smoothing out on his backside. So I'm going to add some more black acrylic there and just blend that in trying to keep it as smooth as possible. Another little bit of area that needed some smoothing out. I just, whenever I see something that needs help, I'm going to try to fix it. But then I'm going to add another bead of black acrylic over that tummy panel. And then while it's wet, I'm going to take the tip of my brush and just drag it through it to create little horizontal lines on his tummy that are going to give you sort of that, like I said, he's got like panels, paneled scales on his tummy. So then I'm going to be adding his arms and legs with, once again, black acrylic. And I'm sorry, I know this design is kind of hard to tell exactly what I'm doing just because everything is black on black and you can't really tell. But I'm going to be sculpting two arms. One arm that you can only see just like a little tiny bit of that's on the back of him on the other side. And then the other arm, you, I just decided to have him come over and hold his stomach. I don't know, maybe he's had a rough night um, but then I'm going to add his legs and as you can see in a moment I'm going to be deciding that I sculpted that wrong and I'm just going to take a tweezers and sort of scrape off that wet acrylic that was still on there and then fix up the shape that I had not made quite right and then add so I did his thigh his calf and then his foot and then you're also going to need to add basically his knee area on the other side just like you did with his other arm just add the little bit of leg that's going to show on the back side and now we're going to be working on chameleonizing him. So I'm going to apply some of that black gel paint to the area that I want the first color. So I'm going to be doing this color by color. So cure that for 60 seconds and then apply your first color. I did with number um, 681, which is sort of a pink green color. And then I'm going to add another layer of the gel paint. This one I'm going to do his shoulder area pretty much and then down over his arms. Cure that halfway. For me, it's 60 seconds, as I said before, in my UV lamp. And then I'm going to be doing 583, which is the purple-blue color, which is actually probably one of my favorites. I really like that one. 
I'm going to do the next section, which kind of is between his arm and his leg. And then it also goes over his leg. And over the other back leg. And then I'm going to be applying color number 585, which is sort of a blue teal color. And once again, we're going to be applying more of that wonderful gel paint. So I'm going to be filling in about half his tail and then up meeting where the last color ended. Cured halfway, apply color number 589, which is more of like a, a greenish goldish color. And then filling in his tail with more of, it's more gold than the other ones. It's a little bit on the green side in certain lights, but it's pretty much gold. And then I'm going to be covering his tummy panel with more of that gel paint, being very careful not to get any of it on any of the other areas, just trying to keep it contained to that one area at the moment. And you can try to apply a very thin layer, especially over the tummy, just so that you don't fill in those lines that you made with the tip of your brush before to separate out the panel. So just a really thin layer. I'm going to add a little bit of the gel paint to the tip of his beak on his tail, that little heart shape and then I'm going to be adding the lines on his wings. So I'm going to start by outlining the top, that V shape, and then creating a line from the tip of the V down into the points of the W. Just like that. And then I'm going to repeat it for the other wings. So first starting by outlining my V and then connecting the point of the V down to the points of the W. Cure that halfway once again, and then I'm going to be applying the silver hollow onto all of those areas we just did. So that's going to be his tummy, his beak, his tail, and over his wings. And I think this looks amazing on his wings. It looks, it's so eye-catching. That's one of my favorite details of this guy. And then or put that in for another 60 seconds just to set all of that chrome powder or all of the gel, and then take a lint-free wipe and just sort of dust him a little bit to get rid of any extra powder that's hanging on and then with black acrylic paint I'm going to be outlining some details like his arms and legs and then the sections in his tummy panel and then with white I'm going to be adding his eye and his nostril and now I'm going to be applying a layer of gel sealer over my entire dragon this is extremely important so that you don't end up removing any of your chrome powder or I keep saying that over your chameleon powder or the silver holographic powder. So just seal that in, cure it once again, and you're all done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this design. Please share any recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram. I would really love to see them, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!